Hello explorers and welcome to another video. Today we are looking into how to create a video in Java. And this video is actually a topic request from a guy called Klato that I have... Uh, I'm not... I don't know the guy but I have played D&D &D with him over the internet. I think he's uh, living in Australia and he's an avid both listener and creator at Hacker Public Radio. So that's how we met. And he sent me an email and asked, he said that he finds my videos very informative and helpful and a lot of stuff goes over his head, but there is uh, something he can file away for the future. He has the topic request that at the moment he's creating a lot of media and he wants to know how to take a bunch of images and create a movie file from it. And he, he knows that that might not be my expertise, but if it's something you can do in Java, for instance, then that would be very interesting. And we had the situation at work that I wanted to render PDFs in a different manner. And talking about it uh, to my colleagues was not really something that could um, show it in a good way or I couldn't really explain it in a good way what the difference between the different rendering me method was. So I created something that could render PDFs in a manner so you can see the flow of the actual format. And that made it much easier to talk about the differences in different rendering methods. So that's one use case of this and there is is probably multiple other use cases that you can have this uh, video mode in and you can actually use it to create videos from code that could show some process or some flow which is much more interesting for your colleagues when you are working with a specific problem. So let's look at this. Let's jump over to some code here. First off, we can look at the uh, Maven file here. So we, I actually found this uh, plugin called uh, Suggle and it came from, I looked at the Maven repository and there were, and there were a conversion library called Open IMAI. IMAI, uh, it's actually some kind of library to create scientific movies and other things. So they are working a lot with 3D and creating things into the movies or other kind of media. And they had a wrapper for Shuggle uh, or X-U-G-G-L-E. <laughs> I don't know how to pronounce that. And that wrapper worked pretty well with that framework but it didn't expose all the features. And when I found that they this could actually be brought in as a library, I just put it in here. So that's one of the uh, dependencies I add. And I also have to add their repository. So this struggle is actually on DCM for uh, SCE. So it's a separate Maven repository. I don't know about these, but this, Plugin seems to work pretty well, so I added it here. And then we have the, uh, I have a logging framework because this uh, juggle actually uses SLF4J. And if you don't have any logger, it actually crashes, which is a little bit sad that it doesn't handle that use case uh, nicely, but I'm used to using log4j, so I added it in here. If we look on the actual creation part of uh, a video, we have some, some things that we need to add up here. We need to have a time unit and, and so on. And uh, in our main here, we need to keep track on which frame we are actually recording at the moment. And as we are just adding images, each frame would be one image. And then we need to have a stream index and a stream ID. That's a way to tell the, uh, the viewing software 
some points where you can jump to and so on. So if you want to create multiple streams, then you can have multiple IDs here, but I just put those to zero. And then we have a frame rate here, so I will record an image every 500 milliseconds, so half a second. And then I put a width and height for this video, and that's pretty much what the image with width and height are of the images that I put in, so 320 times 200. And then I have some parameters for audio here, and that came from the example on Chuggles hem, uh, homepage. And I'm not doing audio in this example, but it could be good to know that you can work with audio as well. But I think that's a different can of worm that I don't want to open in this video, because actually getting video and uh, audio synced is a really hard problem. Then I create a media writer here that will create a move file. So uh, this will write the move movie or video and then I create a listener here and this listener is not actually needed for this uh, to work. You can create a video without this listener but it's very nice to actually have a visual representation of the creation process. So this will open a video only viewer that shows you all the images while it records. And then I add a video stream here with the parameters that I added up uh, up top, you can create an audio stream as I mentioned. And then I take this directory I have here of the rubber docs, uh, ducks from my uh, machine learning training. Uh, I have a different video about that, but that's a lot of video, uh, a lot of images. So I thought that could be a good example to record. From this directory, I loop over the files and I read in a buffered image. And you see here that you can use any buffered image. So you can read in any buffered image. So for instance, you can create uh, something from a rendering. If we look here, we want to write a frame. Uh, so of this buffered image, that will be one frame. And we do an encode video, then we take the ID that we created earlier, we take the frame that we want to record, and the next um, frame time, which is what we had up here, the next time, uh, frame time, so the, it's zero at the moment, and then the default time unit, so that's... Then down here we set the next uh, frame time, and we add the frame rate that we created up here, so the uh, 500 milliseconds, so we know where the next frame should end up. And that's pretty much it. And when we run through this, we will close the writer in order to create our movie file, and then we are done. So let's run this and see how it works. And here you can see a representation of when it's recording my video. You see each image, and you see when it puts it into the video. So this is the representation you get when you add this listener to your feed. Pretty nice, I think. You get a lot of data about what it actually is doing during this process. And there, it was done. Let's see if we can play this video that we created here. So here we have the video that I just created. So every 500 milliseconds, we see a new frame in this video. So this was pretty much what I wanted to uh, talk about today. Uh, I hope that you found this interesting. I hope that you learned something today. If you have any questions or suggestions, leave them down in the comment section below. Have you created videos using code in any way? Leave a comment about that as well. If you like this video, give it a like, share it with your friends and colleagues. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do that. And I really hope to see you in the next video.